Hello everybody, today is April 11th, 2013. It is the season 3 premiere and we have a lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Hello everybody, my name is Thomas and joining me tonight we have... Brandon. All right, Brandon, uh, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, Bobby couldn't make it tonight. He's uh, taking care of some other engagements, but we had so much good news come from PAX and other events that we went, decided to go ahead and get an episode out there pretty quick. So we are back in our Season 3 premiere, and we ended Season 2 talking about the Oculus Rift. I had anticipated getting mine in, and sure enough, I did, I think the day after we recorded. Um, and I've got some issues with it. Um, some very positive things, uh, but I'll start with the bad news first. Uh, first off, it is the development kit one. It's not Crystal Cove. It's not DK2. So as a result, it is the lower resolution model. And that is the first thing you notice is how extremely low res the mo uh, everything is. Um, it's sub HD. I think it's uh, in the 860 horizontal uh, lines of resolution. So when you put it on and you start a game, it immediately feels like you're looking through a screen window at everything. The pixels are extremely chunky. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that there's been a lot of uh, glare with it. You can't get that definition on what you're looking at, especially on like a console or whatnot. It's very grainy. Yeah, and the, it probably wouldn't be so bad if it was further at a distance, but uh, here are the lenses here. Uh, it's really close to your face when you put it on, and as a result, that resolution, it really hurts it. And playing a game like Star Citizen and the Hangar Module, you've got the high-resolution and high-fidelity models that are there, and you really can't take advantage of it. You've got a lot of jaggies, you've got a lot of lines with it, and um, and that experience is carried out through a lot of the other titles. I've you know, I've modded a couple games and used a couple add-ons to try some of the more popular titles, uh, like Skyrim, I've played with the Rift. I've played um, World of Warcraft with the Rift and a few other titles. And the Rift tailored games, the ones that are custom tailored for it, they look fine and they play great. Uh, it's just you do have that really chunky um, view, that screen door view. And yeah, did, mm -hmm. did you feel like when you were playing it, I've heard a lot of people say that they get motion sick. Did you feel that? Not at all. Because of the res? Okay. Not at all. Um it, it, the head tracking is amazing. Extremely low latency. As you're moving your head around, it it, it, it pops right with you. Um, so I think a lot of that, it may just be my system, where mm -hmm. I've, or that with the power of my system, that it keeps up with me better. I, I could see, though, if the head tracking was a little bit slower and your frame rate wasn't as high, how it, you could definitely get that motion sick type of feel okay. with it. Um, but not at all. I didn't have any of the... Uh, any of the telltale motion sickness that you would get. I didn't get any of the eye strain um, that you would typically get. As far as the 3D quality, it's good. Um, I still think, uh, based on the current technology at my disposal, and I've used the NVIDIA 3D Vision and uh, a passive 3D display with my LG, I still think passive 3D is better as far as resolution. Um, and as far as, as far as frame rate refresh goes, um, but I did order uh, development kit two for the Oculus Rift, and that should be coming in in June. And when that does come in in June, I'll give it another go. But now, do you think that when you get the development kit two, that opinion of uh, how that quality uh, will change? Absolutely. With, yeah, I'm. I mean, the, my my really my only complaint, major complaint, is the resolution and the development kit too is tackling that heads on, mm -hmm. and I think that that's going to make the for me that was my biggest complaint with it was mm -hmm. uh, the resolution. So I, I really do think that that's going to fix that problem for me. Well, that and the three D. Do you think that's going to change that having that higher resolution? Oh, absolutely. It's it's okay. definitely going to be a. a far a far richer environment and i think with the higher quality of the displays 
in the higher resolution. I think some of the problems that people are having with, and I think it's more stra- eye strain than anything else, just because okay. you are looking at it. So I think that a lot of that for people is going to go away. And I've been on the forefront of 3D gaming for years. I mean, the right. 3D vision that I have from NVIDIA, I got as a beta test. So I've been using that for several years and I've been using my passive 3D, excuse me, LG display um, as, soon as, as soon as they made one available. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've seen the technology from at least the consumer version of technology grow and it's 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 up there. And I think with the higher resolution, it's mm-hmm. by far going to ex- succeed, ex- exceed everything else. And um, it's even they send the DK two with the higher resolution. It's still not the uh, end the end game the the final product. Mm-hmm. So I really think with as close as those displays are to your eyes, it's going to have to be, they're they're going to have to be higher uh, as high as possible. I don't know if they could get four K in that type of a display mm-hmm. uh, resolution, but I really think that's where it needs to be for it to be a, a good experience. Well, they um, were talking about that coming out in 2015 or 2016, if I remember right. right. But the consumer is only going to have 1080p when it comes out. Probably, so. yeah, probably. And, and you know, it could be spoiled too. You know, I, I work 40 hours a week staring at a um, you know a, a Retina display uh, notebook. I have a 2K display above me that I use on my television, and mm. um, I use you know an iPad Retina and an iPhone 5s. And I'm used to just those high density displays, so maybe that's maybe I'm just spoiled by high pixel density displays that I, just everything else looks bad to me. So, well, I um, think the, the what you were saying is that the eye, how close your eyes are to it, it's mm-hmm. a different perspective. So you feel in uh, I want to say an alien environment because you've not had that experience before, and right. that's been a real limitation for VR is giving people that close fidelity and since we're there to be able to push that technology now oculus is doing a great job i just feel on the same lines as you that it needs to be more than 1080p to really push that uh development further yeah one of the other kind of and this is a small complaint it's it's field of view it really isn't there yet um you know you you definitely have about about where my hands are you have this Mm -hmm. black wall you know, surrounding you. So you don't have the, the, a really good field of view with it yet. And there's, and I think that's being addressed in DK two to try to expand that field of view as well. And I think that'll help. Mm -hmm. But again, as you expand that, that, you know, that, that field of view, you also need more pixels to fill it. So Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm holding my breath and waiting for uh, thinking that, you know, 4k is kind of the sweet spot for it, Mm -hmm. but uh, we'll see. On yeah. the Ocu- on the Oculus news as well, it did get acquired by Facebook, and I text Bobby like as soon as I found out, and I was like, "This is the worst day in gaming history." Yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, I've since not really changed my opinion um, uh, about it. Uh, the only positive I think from this is that they're getting the the capital that they need mm-hmm. to develop the products because hardware is extremely expensive. I mean, even with a $50 million budget or a hundred million dollar budget to really get the hardware and the quantities that they need and the quality that they need, it's, mm-hmm. they're going to need more money and Facebook gives yeah. them that opportunity. It's just, you see all the other things that Facebook has done and I kind of shudder to think, but yeah. I, I mean, think we'll if see. they keep it separate, they keep it out of, uh, you know, uh, corporate, uh, I don't, I don't see it as being a negative because like you said, the, the capital, but if too many, too many fingers try and get into the pie, there's not going to be enough for it to come out as a quality product. Oh yeah. You know? I, I definitely agree. It's, and I, I, Facebook I want, I, does that though. That's yeah. what they've done with past products, and it's uh, we don't want to see history repeating itself because Oculus is right there. They're doing the right thing for the right reasons, and now when it becomes a corporate uh, entity to have a return on an investment, they're going to demand things to be done not necessarily the right way. So right, and then when you when when Zuckerberg was talking about what his vision was with it, you know, to to be a new platform and you know, to be able to, to walk around stores and things like that. And it's, it just kind of makes me sick in my stomach and Mm -hmm. that's not what I want in, 
maybe it's because it is so foreign to me. The only, mm. the only, the, my only experiences with VR have been in gaming and in development of, you, you know, 3D modeling. And yeah. that's where I feel comfortable with the Oculus Rift mm. or with, and, and with VR. So to kind of take it to that next level of it just being a part of my everyday experience, I can go to Amazon mm-hmm. and use my Oculus and shop through the Amazon store. I don't really yeah. know if, if that's something I want, but it's foreign and, and alien to me. So maybe that's yeah. why I feel that way. Perhaps in execution, it'll be great. Well, I can see how it would be a benefit playing devil's advocate that, you know, you have somebody with disabilities, you know, where they're in a wheelchair or whatnot, and they can't get to the mall, and it's not as accessible. They could really use something like that for themselves, or just somebody in a rural area that doesn't have a particular store, and they want to get, say, a new bed set, and they right. want to be able to get a better perspective on it. That might be able to offer it, and I could see why that would be game-changing as far as a retail market. But as far as a gaming market where this has been the main focus from day one, I don't want to see them lose sight of that. I want to see the focus on continuing to push the product for the PC. If it does go console, you know, I can understand why they would want to do that. But focus on the PC first. Get it right on this platform. Then look into the other markets. Don't change the the uh t- the the marching orders that we've already known and loved right and i think it'll be easier to port the rift to consoles than than to change your experience of, of shopping in a store or something like that i mean it, it is just an hdmi cable that plugs into you know a a, dis- a, a display output device so mm-hmm. you know it's it's once they get the resolutions right on the console you plug it in i think it'd be fine on mm-hmm. a console may not be what i want i would prefer it to be on the pc but hell if if i can use it in other ways i'm okay with that but i am a little bit concerned about i guess i guess what everyone's number one fear is they don't want to be playing a game and then get pop-ups in their face you know Susie smith likes what you did on you know your vacation or Mm -hmm. you know pay 15 cents so you can jump no no one wants any of that and Mm -hmm. facebook has the history of doing those type of things but I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, Chris Roberts chimed in on it as well. He said, you know, that, and I'm par- very, very loosely paraphrasing this, but essentially he understands their desire to do that because of because of the need of, of the capital, mm-hmm. and they just didn't have the capital. And he said that that's something that he'll never do, that there's no reason for him to sell out to somebody else just to get capital because he's got all the capital he needs to make mm-hmm. a great game. Um, but he was still, they're still showcasing the Rift, uh, you know, and a lot mm-hmm. of the Wingman's Hangar, we're still seeing it showcased. So it's, it, they haven't abandoned the Rift as a result yeah. of yeah, them being and, acquired. And Chris also drew the line that he's making a software game. He's not making hardware. He's not developing hardware. That requires a lot of money. And mm-hmm. that puts, I think he illustrated that eloquently, that the focus is when you're doing prototyping of any sort, it's going to require backing. Yeah. And the uh, Oculus Rift, even for all its pros, it there they might have ru- have run into funding issues one way or another down the line and yeah. required some other injections. So uh, as Chris pointed it out, that kind of brought me around to be okay with the capital and that is a good thing. Yeah, I guess before we change topics, one thing that I think would be great for use of a Rift outside of gaming um, would be travel. Um, I'd mm-hmm. love to travel. I'd love to see things. So if there was a, um, I don't know, an Oculus Rift version of Google Maps or something like that where you could, you know, kind of see places and in, in real life places in a virtual mm-hmm. environment, I would be very excited for that. And I'm kind of hoping that that is... I'm hoping that's higher on the development pi- pipeline for Facebook with Rift than, you know, pay play Farmville with the Rift or, <laughs> you know, get your status updates in, in Rift. Right. So we'll have to kind of wait and see. But I guess the big piece of news since we've been gone, uh, another big piece, is the Idris Corvette got an overhaul. Uh, for mm-hmm. one, it's not a Corvette anymore. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's been upgraded to a frigate. The main reason for that change was due to Squadron 42, and Aaron 
felt that it needed to be bigger, so they decided to go ahead and do that. Now, the great news for Thomas and everybody else who's already bought the Corvette version, they're going to be getting the friggin' upgrade for free. And that's going to uh, have greater ramifications because it's going to be a bigger ship, going to have more capabilities, but none of that information's been released. All we do know right now is that they do still plan on making a Corvette model. The only question is, is can the players still buy the Corvette that other players have already gotten, or excuse me, the frigate that other players are already getting? Because they've already said that they are still working on a Corvette model of the Idris. So we don't know if it's staying the same name or if they're just going to have two different versions out there. So it's still kind of a wait and see. But I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't be if you purchased <laughs> one to be getting a larger ship? I mean, yeah. it's like it's, it was like Christmas. You know, I mean, I'm getting something new that I didn't even know I was getting. Mm -hmm. Um by the same token, the my possibly my only concern is just now the larger crew ma uh, requirements for manning it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, th talk about a first world problem. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, a, you really can't it's complain. It's like a flea fart in a hurricane. It's not really a big problem, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, but um, I guess now then we need to talk about the hangar module. Or the uh, dogfighting module. I'm rolling, right now I'm rolling on some B-roll for you. The, the chance to see some of the video from PAX. And uh, it's it's running. I've got it muted. Um, first off, the, the, the big thing that I noticed immediately was the um, was the, the pass. The, the, the retexturing that they've done. They, they started to put PBR in. And uh, on, the sh on all the ships. And Well, PBR is done on all the ships. Yep. From what Chris said. And the only thing that had not been done was more than one pass on the hangar. Yep. So it, as far as PBR looks, it, I think it's stellar. Yeah, some of some of the cool Easter eggs that I wasn't expecting um, when, when he hops in, and we're getting to that point now in the video, was mm -hmm. uh, was the helmet flip. When, when, he, when he hops in the Hornet, puts that helmet on with a flip, there's just something just so innately badass with that. Uh, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, the, the startup sequence... Uh, as as you know, the ship kind of spins up and the hangar doors are opening. Extremely nice looking stuff. I mean, it's it's incredible. Um, some of the complaints that uh, we were hearing um, from you know people who who got, got their chance to actually uh, get into it uh, was the was the HUD. And um, mm -hmm. Chris did say that you know it is still a work in progress. And you were saying something about the the HUD designer was the guy who did the Iron Man stuff. Yeah, Iron Man 3, he did the HUD. Uh, his, the interview he did, he was talking about how none of that stuff had to make sense. And I saw the parallels of how the, you know, like the optic would go over his eye when he was targeting looked very similar to the targeting for the missile lock. And yeah. I, I think what we need as gamers is a lot less flair and a lot more... Uh, uh, direct information. We don't need to have a lot of fluff. So, even though it was cool, it just felt unnecessary. Yeah, and and I kind of have mixed feelings about that as well. I'm all about visual eye, ca eye candy through GUIs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that type of stuff. Um, but in in a sense, I guess people were, the complaint is it kind of gets in the way that mm -hmm. you know it's it's too big, it's too flashy. Um, That's it. Yeah. I hope though, in some way. They give me the option to make it flashy, and maybe mm. not just maybe not when I'm in, a, in a, an intense PvP session. Maybe in kind of a more PVE session where it's a little bit more relaxed. Uh, you know, give me that, give me a toggle or switch or something that I can enable it. But uh, personally, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, I, I, I thought I, it was great. My only problem was the missile lock because it just felt like there was a lot on the screen just for something mm -hmm. so simple. But I loved how the screen looked on the left, how it gave you all your information for your guns. The only thing I thought was missing was the throttle control. I didn't get yeah. the sense of knowing exactly your speed when moving in the demo, but you know that's a, a small problem that they can fix later because, like you said, work in progress. Right. They need that feedback. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we got to see the fly-by-wire we got to see a lot of the a lot of the really good stuff that uh, we've been anticipating. 
Um, one another complaint that we've we we heard is uh, you know kind of feeling like Chris kind of broke a promise about having it mm-hmm. um, fully playable in. Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I I can I can see why people would be disappointed, but there are worse things to me. If it if it's not yeah. if it's not right, then don't show it. You know, let's yeah. make make it perfect and then and then display it. Well, well, a lot of people were looking at the Twitch and taking that as the whole, the whole meal, you know, right. what the, what actually happened after that was they got it up and going. They got to be able to play the PVE version of the game. And then they got to play it on the floor today and all the reviews have been positive. And there has been nothing that I have seen on the forum that takes away the excitement that I have because they failed to have a server to work for multiplayer, which was beyond their control. And a lot of that you can't control when you're going live. If you wanted right. something pre-recorded, we've had that. This was a chance to show it off. And sadly it failed, but the good news coming out of PAX though, we know that it's going to be coming at the end of the month and or next month. So it's coming soon. So we don't have to wait that much longer. Yeah. Um, I, I still have a feeling it's going to be later rather than sooner. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. And I hope I'm wrong. I just kind of have that feeling. It's going to be later rather than sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen anything on anybody's Facebook. Like we saw before the, before the first delay, um, mm-hmm. where, where it was like, well, we're pulling an all nighter big meetings tomorrow. Um, but I just, I, I just, I, I have a feeling that it's not at the polish level that Chris wants it to be yeah. before it's released. And, and we all know that it's alpha and that's going to have bugs and it's not going to be perfect. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that's a work in progress. I mean, everything is a work in progress, but, mm-hmm. um, I just, I, I, you could see the disappointment in Chris's face when he was show, showcasing some things. Um, yeah. And, and at the end he was very, he looked very frustrated because he yeah. really wanted it to perform and it didn't. One of the surprises that uh, I wasn't anticipating, I, I don't know if you were, uh, were the G-Force effects uh, mm-hmm. on, with the blackouts. Um, that, that is incredible. That is something that was so so out of left field. I mean, I, I, we know that Chris is big on realism and immersion, uh, mm-hmm. but I just was not expecting that at all. Were there any surprises for you that you noticed? The biggest surprise for me was actually the level of detail for the planet below that you were fighting above because that I didn't expect for them to have a fully uh, rendered planet down there. I just expected an asteroid field or, you know, something uh, uh, tightly clustered, but that that was a full panoramic view and I was just in awe. Yeah. And I, 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 you're now that you mention it, I I kind of was having those same thoughts that I wasn't, I I was expecting an asteroid field. I was expecting it to be, you know, deep space, nothing, mm-hmm. nothing, you know, uh, orbital. And um, something that really impressed me about that, and maybe it's just because I've been playing too much Kerbal, was how well rendered the planet was. I mean, you could mm-hmm. see the topographical features. You could see the, you know, the cloud cover and, um, you know, some of the lensing that occurs uh, with the light passing through the atmosphere. And um, I... It's just, and it's you just saw incredible. you saw the reaction from the mining platform up top going down into the planet and the actual uh, clouds uh, changing their formation around the beam going down. I was sitting here just going, wow, I've never seen that before. And I've played other space sims like X3 and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even though they look good, they never had that kind of interaction with something in space and on the planet. And I was just taken blown away by that. Yeah. Um, one of the things that uh, I really think that they nailed in the interface as well is uh, the, the 3D usage of that, uh, I guess, his mini-map, if you will, that's in, that's in front right. of him. I, I think that that was perfectly done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, current, current generation space games tend to have, you know, a two-dimensional map, and you always mm-hmm. tend to be fighting things on a, you know a giant pizza pie in space where you're mm-hmm. just flo- flying from one side to the other. I really think that that interface does a really good job at explaining or showcasing the fact that you are actually fighting in three dimensions. Right. 
Yeah, there was a another game that I played that had very good uh a very good uh map for you. It was a 3D map. And that kind of reminded me of it. It was uh uh, it was a Babylon 5, I Found Her, is what it was called. And the uh, I always loved that. And when I saw that in the game, it felt very appropriate. Because Chris was, when he was talking about it before in December, you know, he said that this that system wasn't working. And I was really worried that it was going to be something 2D. And I was relieved that it was something as intricate as what we saw but yet it was simple you knew what you were looking at as soon as you saw it and that's right. what we need yeah the, the things that i tend to hate a lot in um traditional traditional space games are the little arrows above your head that indicate where you're being shot mm -hmm. from i hate that it, it to me it just it feels tacky mm -hmm. and uh, i feel that that 3d map uh, in the center console there Mm -hmm. is a better representation of, of how right. it is. Um, I love the way that the, you know, we, we saw the, um, um, the retro rockets and, and the f flaps and everything around the, the exhaust adjust as he was uh, taking maneuvers. Um, you know, you could physically see the, the, the thrust vectoring, you know, as, mm -hmm. as the speed of the ship was increasing or as he was accelerating, you could see that in the engine. Um, just the that fly level by of, wire. Oh yeah. That was impressive. Yeah, I, it was very responsive. I was, I, you know, we knew that was coming, but how well it worked together, just switching between the modes, mm -hmm. that was that was awesome to see as well. Right. I, I guess my real big question is, what hardware were they running this on? Because, yeah. <laughs> holy crap! I mean, th this is, uh, I, and maybe I'm overstating it, but cinema quality. I mean, I yeah. You, I, I, I think you could go back, you know, just a few years, three or four years yeah. in time, and you wouldn't find film, uh, you yeah. know, cinema quality stuff that looked this good. Yeah. Well, you go back, um, actually, a couple of episodes for um, uh, the next great Starship. It was either the last one or the previous one. I can't remember exactly where they had filler episodes, and they were talking about the machines they have, and they're all i7. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting here going, wow. This is going to make those i5 people who thought they were going to getting a great mid-range machine just choke when they get uh, Star Citizen going. But I got to be honest, I think the video card was had to at least be a 780 Ti or an, a Titan at the very least. Yeah. It, it had to be beefy. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting to see. I'm curious to know if they're doing some of the trickery that I, I know that... I know they're a partner with AMD, so I'm a little bit surprised that AMD isn't saying you should use our chips and you should use our video cards, but I just know that one of the big things in space games, space games are particle effects, and mm. particle effects are handled extremely well through NVIDIA's physics engine. Yes. And when I see things like this, I'm going, I really hope to God that those particle effects are not being done on the CPU and they're mm. being done on the GPU. And NVIDIA does a be in my opinion, does a better job of that at, at AMD. And I'm kind of wondering if they're doing that here, if they're pushing those particle mm -hmm. effects on uh, video cards. And if they're using the 780 Ti's or uh, Titans, then they're being done on the card. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's, it, it's great stuff. I mean, it's definitely something that I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to. Uh, I'm glad they waited and gave us this version as opposed to the version that we saw. Yeah. Um, earlier this in December. Year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the so. one thing that I was, as we said before, we were taken back with was the PBR, the level of fidelity, which they didn't have in December. So for right. me, that, that was the big, a big payoff and I was happy for it. Yeah. Um, keep keeping up with the, the next great starship. I mean, it, it starting to look really good. The, the projects that they're working on, mm -hmm are really looking good and it's it's interesting to go have you been a religious watcher have you been keeping up to date with everything oh i'm i've been keeping up to date with everything i gotta be honest uh three dingo 3d dingo or whatever their name is i like theirs most mm -hmm. of all um there are a few others that i would love to still see in the in the game but that's my favorite right now yeah i have to agree with you i, I think that theirs looks the best 
and um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see when this is all put together, and mm -hmm. when everything's fully in game and in engine, and and that returns next Friday. Actually, yep. there's no episode. Uh, there's no episode uh, during the PAX weekend. So yeah, and uh, no uh, ten for the chairman. I think Monday either. Right. Correct. Yeah. The only thing that I know of for certain is that Wingman Hanger is coming back, and they're going to do double the questions because they missed it this week. Or because they couldn't have uh, Rob or anybody else there. So yeah. Well, um, I think that's all for episode one. Is there anything else that we missed that you want to talk about? I know next for our next episode we have a couple topics that we want to discuss, but they require so much time that we right. didn't want to make a you know multi hour long episode. But yep. Well, we, we only I think missed. We, I think we only missed one thing. What's that? And I uh, today during the uh, future of PC gaming. Uh, panel at PAX, Chris Roberts announced that Star Citizen is going to work on Linux. That's true, which is interesting because um, what DirectX is going to be the engine in Windows. Um, I, I think they're going to use Mantle. I mean, no, they are going to use Mantle. They are supporting Mantle. For the AMD and, folks. Yep, yeah, and uh, uh, the only thing uh, Chris Roberts said about the new DirectX is that it's interesting. It'll do the same thing as Mantle, but you didn't say anything about supporting it yet. So yeah. it sounds like they're looking into it. Yeah, and the, the one thing about DirectX that, while it's clunky and terrible, like most Windows products, because they're so mature and they have to do so much backward compatibility, they, be, they become very easy to iterate. It, it doesn't mm -hmm. take much for... A developer to go from DirectX 9 to DirectX 10 to DirectX 11. There's not a lot of extra coding that has to be done. So if they stay true to that model where it's, you know, just some new calls and, you know, a few changes, it might be easier for them to uh, put that next generation DirectX support in their title. Yeah. Um, but, you know, being a, being a multi-platform user, I mean, as, as you guys know, I try to experience all platforms in as many ways as possible. So I don't have a biased opinion. Um, it will be interesting to know if it's on Linux, that's OpenGL, and Mac uses OpenGL for yeah. their uh, graphics engines as well. So we might see some Mac support as well. Now, I know that the hardware side on the um, on Mac devices tends to be a little bit lower just because you can't build your own hardware. But, you know, we're still looking at several years out uh, for mm. the, the title to be in its final full release. Yeah. So who knows by then you might have a decent, uh, you know, Mac pro that you could play this on as well. So to me, anytime a company says we're going to release a product and support another platform for it to be on, whether it be Linux or Mac, that's a positive thing. Um, yeah. Even, even if they were to go to console and they never will, but even if they went to, to console, I think that's a positive thing just because it gets more people a good experience and gets more people yeah. excited about it. So. Well, and just because, like you were saying, the Mac, you can't get your own hardware for, you know, you got to get it pre-built. You know, the thing is, is that when this comes out, who knows what the mid-range will be for right. Mac. And I personally want to see it Star Citizen on as many platforms to play on as possible, specifically for the desktop. Yep. You know, so you get a greater experience, not just with the peripherals, but also with uh, the support that you can get with it outside of what you can for a console. And the big thing that I think that's really going to push this onto the Mac platform is the uh, fact that gamers still want that choice. They want to go to Mac. They they'll find a way to do it or right. they'll get something else to do it. Cause even Linux has something in that where you can make it back, make it compatible yeah. with direct X only games. So it, it, by that time, I think there'll be more in place or in a better position. Star citizen will be. Yeah. And even if it's something that comes out a couple of months or even a year later, I don't think the community is going to be too upset because they're already ambitious and their plate is full. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's 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 not something that I would say it's delay the development so you can make a console version or a Mac version of the game. Mm -hmm. I say if it comes naturally and it's easy to do, it takes a couple months, release what you got as soon as you can and then 
use that as your time filler. You know, if, if yep. you've, you've got this big development team that's the game's gold, what do they do now? Will they work on new content? But you still got a big team, you know, a couple mm-hmm. people wondering what they need to do, keep them a job around, have them develop, you know, uh, different versions of it. And mm-hmm. like I said, you know, even going to consoles, even going to, to Mac, it, all that de- enables them to do is to further expand the experience. Once you go to Mac, mm-hmm. it's easy to go to iOS. Well, I mean, I'm not saying you could ever play Star Citizen on iOS, <laughs> but maybe there are facets and aspects of it that you can bring over to, to iOS. Once you mm-hmm. once you go to Linux, you know you can go easily port into Android. So there's a lot of different facets for them to explore after mm-hmm. release of game. Nothing to delay the release of game, but after release of game, you know to be able to make a semi port of the game in some capacity to you know tablets or to to mobile phones well they are going to have a star citizen app yeah, with, we, Moby, that. yeah we got moby yeah. glass which which will be a peripheral for in-game use as as far as i understand it you'll be able to yes. use it as kind of like a, a, a secondary or tertiary to display but yes. i still like that experience of being able to okay i'm not at my pc I, you know, I've got five minutes on a lunch break at work. Let me log in and, you know, check my auctions or let me log in and, you know, communicate with some of the people in my uh, organization. Yeah. You know, things like that. While it's, while it doesn't, it's, it's not show stopping. It's, it's not something that I would ever say, don't work on this and work on that instead. Mm -hmm. It's just something unique. And you start, and we've seen companion apps for a lot of games. And to me, I think that all they do is make the experience richer. And yes. if you have if you have the time to do it and you have the resources to do it, go for it. I say. Yep, and I think Star Citizen is going in a great direction right yep. now. And the more they focus on getting the dogfighting and everything else out, after that, when we can start feeling the uh, exhilaration of their development, you know, when they feel like they're getting closer and closer, then they need to look into that other stuff. Yeah. But I think the big thing on why they started or the big reason they chose to support Linux over Mac was because Crytek said yeah. that they were going to be supporting Linux. So that was one less hurdle for them to overcome. So either way, the industry is changing. And it's good to see that this game, that the community is driven is driving the change for us to have the option for yeah. the things that we want. And yeah. we haven't been told no once. Yep. And it, like you said, I mean, it's, 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 it's the consumers pushing them to make the decisions. And I like the fact that they're not betting, their, betting all their money on one platform. Exactly. Because right now, Windows is the dominant gaming platform. But with SteamOS and yep. with a lot of the missteps we've seen in uh, Windows development... Not that I have a problem with it. I think Windows 8 and 8.1 are fantastic operating systems. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people disagree with that and disagree with that to the point where they're looking for anything and everything so they can jump ship. Yeah. And, you know, I'd hate for them to make a game that they anticipate to last 10 or 20 years be limited because the platform that they developed on is limited to five years. Yeah. So, you know, not that not that I think PCs are going to die in five years. I think exactly the opposite. But, you know, if if if, if it doesn't take much... For them to, to expand their net, expand the net, put it on more yep. platforms, keeps the game alive. Yep. I agree. All right. Well, I think we've come to an end for our premiere mm-hmm. episode. So uh, I definitely want to thank you guys for tuning in and we should be back in two weeks. So we'll talk to you then.